The second scripture passage today comes from Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered all his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he had began to be in need. So he went and hired him out to a citizen of the country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, said the father, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Would you pray with me? Dear God, Please open the hearts of the people here today so that they may hear the message that I have for them. Please use me to share this message as it is one that you would have for your people today. Amen. So this passage is probably one of the most read or used ones in uh, youth ministry, and it's because the lesson is very simple, that God's salvation reaches to all people that are willing to accept him back into their lives. To youth specifically, I think that this is a really good verse just because it's comforting if you come back from a dark time, you know, in middle school or something like that, and um, it really just brings it all back and you realize that you can come back to God. However, I really have had a problem with this verse in the past. Um, I remember a few years ago we were doing a series on it, and I actually told Brian that I wasn't going to come back if we did it again just because... Part of it really bothered me, and the part that bothered me was not the younger brother and the salvation aspect of it, because I do believe that people deserve second chances when they come back from dark times like that. My problem came from the older brother. The older brother worked diligently on his farm for his father, and he really deserved everything that his younger brother had, but still, when his younger brother comes back, he gets the party. It's almost as if the older brother was expected to be a diligent worker, and he never really received any recognition for it. So imagine it like this. It's kind of like if you're in school or you're at work, and you decide at the beginning of the year, um, at the school year, that you're going to work for one goal. And you're going to work really hard, and you're going to reach that goal. And so at the end of the year, Your goal comes, you get the grade you wanted or the review you wanted from your boss. However, when you're talking to your colleagues or the people around you, your classmates, 
you realize that the obvious slacker that you worked with or that you were in class with received the same grade plus an extra bonus on top of that. And you think to yourself that that couldn't be true because this person you watched fall asleep during meetings or play on their phone in class, and it just doesn't seem fair to you that that could have happened, that you worked so hard and you were recognized for working hard, you reached your goal, and you should be proud of that. But you never really got that extra bonus that you thought that you deserved that someone else that didn't work as hard as you got. Uh, personally, I identify with the older brother, maybe because I'm an older sibling myself, and <laughs> I'm sure some of you here today can see where I'm coming from in that. Uh, throughout my life, I've regularly attended church and uh, volunteered with Sunday school and taught for a few years, and I've gone on various mission trips. So God has always had a presence in my life, and I've always seen Jesus as my Savior. And I'm not saying that I've never made mistakes, because I have. It's just that those mistakes have never been drastic enough to turn me away from God. And I think that this is the way that the older brother feels as well. So I find it extremely unfair when the older, brother, the older brother's hard work goes unrecognized, like it was just expected of him to be this way. However, whenever I was preparing for this sermon, I came to the realization that there's something to be learned from the older brother, and I think that it carries almost as much weight as that from the younger brother. So the message from the younger brother is obvious, but the message from the older brother is so subtle that we can almost always miss it. In the story, the older brother is so focused on himself and his anger towards his situation that he fails to recognize his older brother, who he loves dearly, and has returned from a period of darkness. The older brother does not stop, and he does not think about what his brother may have gone through in the last few years while he was comfortably living with his father. Therefore, the older brother was so quick to judge his younger brother without seeing the situation from his brother's perspective. Today, we have a saying that goes along with this. And it goes, you never know a person until you take a walk in their shoes. The older brother has no idea what his brother faced in the world while he was away. This parable tells us that at one point, the younger brother was so poor and so hungry that he longed for the food that the pigs had. And one may argue that the brother's actions, the, young, the actions of the younger brother, led him to this poor and disheveled state. However, when you focus on the older brother, he didn't take the time to think and to actually um, process what his brother may have experienced and wasn't sympathetic to him at all. He quickly jumps to conclusions. Instead, he should have thought about the situation from his younger brother's perspective, and he would have realized it was not unfair to have the party. The younger brother was very ashamed to come back to his father, and it took a lot of courage for him to return after what he had done. The older brother should have realized this. The lesson learned from the older brother is very important at all stages of life, but I think that it's especially important for high school graduates like I am, moving on to experience the real world. In college or in the workforce, there will be people that will be completely different than us. They'll be outside of our little bubble, and we may not agree with the things that they're doing, but we have to take the time to understand where they're coming from and what they're doing. God calls us to love your neighbor as yourself, and we should not be quick to judge people based on their actions before understanding where they are coming from. And regardless of our differences, we should never jump to conclusions about the other. Without recognizing exactly what they are coming from, the older brother teaches us this lesson through his quick judgment of his brother before pausing to imagine what he must have experienced in his time away. God's call to love one another is something that we must do as we go out into the world. God wants us to be an example for people to follow, and being gracious and respectful of all people is something that God wants us to do. So as Jesus finishes this parable, he kind of leaves it as a cliffhanger ending. He lets you decide if you think the older brother had gone into the party or if he had stayed outside and sulked a little bit more that his brother got something that he had wanted. We actually might extend this to our own lives to see what we would do in that situation. And my hope is that all of you would consider this lesson that is to be learned from the older brother and acknowledge that there are different perspectives in life and we must be respectful of them 
and we should not be so quick to judge people like the older brother was. This way, you can enter the party and experience God's grace the way that it is supposed to be. Thank you.